So welcome back. We are now on to part four of the little Vimarana puppy and we're going to be working on the ear um, today. So again, looking at the layering, um, the different colours and um, the importance, I guess, of making sure that you're using your pencil in the direction of the fur growth. So um, just finishing off the little face um, here and then moving on to the ear. So when you're working with animals, it really is vital, I think, right from the beginning to ensure that your pencil strokes follow the direction of the fur. So you can see here, I think I'm using the fossil grey, the Derwent Lightfast fossil grey, and I'm just bringing in it almost looks like I'm drawing every single tiny hair and you know you, yeah actually at this stage I probably am because I can um, you know I can just fill in the whole of the ear that brings in a little bit of the texture um, and then what I tend to do is using my putty eraser here I'll kind of fill in the whole of the area and then I'll lift out some of those highlighty areas I find that's really really useful because it gives me a good idea of contours right from the beginning um, and once I've got an idea of the contours and where the lights and the darks and everything are going to go just in that sort of like one initial layer I can then really start to build up the colours um, you know and get some of those darker areas in I like to get the darkish areas in quite quickly uh, because it means that then I can work out how light and dark or light or dark my um my midtones and my highlights need to be because if you end up with two lighter shadows everything else ends up lighter and then you end up with something that's sort of like a little bit washed out and a little bit flat so you know really concentrate on those darker areas and try and get those in quite quickly so that you can sort of temper the uh the the um the midtones and the highlights if you need to so again i think i'm using the taupe here i think the taupe uh, light fast uh, pencil was a, a very very useful one in this particular portrait it um, I talked very briefly um, in the in the previous video about not just choosing a color that was going to be an exact replica of the color that I was using on the animal um, and sometimes you get a pencil that is actually a really really good match and the taupe on this particular piece is a really good match but I'm still using all sorts of different colors in here so I'm using sort of like a a pinky color I can't remember what that pinky color was to be honest but I'm using a pinky color I'm using that fossil gray in here I start to use a little bit of the Caput Morton violet so it's not just about one color and trying to match one colour. It's about mixing those colours. And mixing colours is, I think it's an art in itself. Some people tend to be able to see colour quite easily. I think we all see colour very differently. You know, a lot of people will sort of say to me, oh, I, I don't see the same colours as you see. And I would always recommend in all of my tutorials that you use the colours that you see. Um, but when it comes to mixing colours, I think then it's a lot of it is practice. A lot of it is experimenting and working out what, what works and what doesn't. Um, you know, a coloured pencil is no different really to any other medium when it comes to mixing your colours you know um uh, using your color theory i think is a really great um way to be able to get some fantastic results with your colors you know so using your complementary colors your the opposite colors your triadic colors um if you don't know what those mean it, it, there's some very very simple explanations on on google uh, you know basically you have an opposite uh, color to a color so uh, if you're looking at something like um, an orange the opposite to an orange is sort of like a, a violety blue color if you're looking at an opposite for a green the opposite to a green is is a red um, you know and those colors work really really well together so a yellow and a purple you'll see people using yellow and purple in logos all of the time it's because it's a complementary color they work really really well together if you're going to be drawing a, a red flower and you've got some really dark shadows a, a fantastic color for a dark shadow in a red flower would be a really dark green um, and the same when it comes to animals you know using those sort of subtle complementary colors works incredibly well so where you've got these um, sort of violety colors using like a little bit of uh, blue in there 
uh, orange in there, a little bit of yellow in there, works really, really nicely. You have to be careful when you're mixing. So if you're using a yellow and a blue that you want to mix together, you, you are going to get green. Um, you know, so moving to a more violet shade is a really good idea and that's where these fabulous colors like the sepia 50 percent the sepia 10 percent in the luminance range the uh the taupe and the mars violet in the light fast range that's when those colors really come into their own when you're you when you're drawing sort of shadows on like orangey colored um animals because it, it um they give you that lovely shadow, but they don't kind of take the colour away. You know, if you if you try and put black down onto an orange dog as a shadow, it's going to look strange. Um, you know, but try using a dark violet colour, it's going to look amazing. Um, I use the dark indigo again quite a lot. So we're bringing in here now a little bit of these sort of... Um, Tiny nuances, tiny sort of changes in, in tonal values in here. Again, this is what's going to make something look really quite realistic because you're bringing in these little tiny changes that we can, you know, the ear isn't flat. It's got all sorts of curves going on in there. Uh, you know, so bringing those in with your darker pencils is, is a really, really good idea. And, and, and as you progress and you learn and you develop, these are the things that you start to pick up. You know, when I first started drawing in 2016, I didn't see any of these. It, it just didn't occur to me that these little uh, nuances were there. Um, and it's only from sort of drawing, um, you know, thousands of hours that you start to pick these little um things up, you know, that actually are incredibly important. And it's the tonal qualities that are far more important than the details. Um, you know, I mean, me just putting in these darker areas into the dog's ear here, uh, it makes it far more realistic than if I tried to draw every single tiny little hair in there. Um, you know, it just the tonal values makes the makes the piece. It really does uh, make it stand out, make it look three D, um, and they're just they're just vital, absolutely vital for uh, you know portraits like this. But the other thing as well is. It's really, really important when you're kind of bringing your tonal values in that you look at the uh, connection between the tones. So where you've got something really, really dark, like you have in the um, the crease of the ear there, and then you've got this quite light area down the side of the ear, um, you're going to get a, uh, the, the connection between those is the really dark area looks set right back, the really light area sets it becomes quite forward. Now, if that wasn't the case and actually I got this wrong and I'd, and I'd created that light area too light or I'd taken created it too dark, um, it's going to make quite a big difference to the structure of the animal. Um, what I see quite a lot, particularly around dog eyes, is that people tend to have two, they have almost like a, a light ring around eyes um, and eyes don't really tend to have that light ring and it's about understanding the tonal values a lot of the time we'll use uh i think i mentioned this before a lot of the time we'll use something like a, a value 10 which is very light um instead of using something like a value five which is kind of you know half again which is more of i'd say like a warm gray four or something like that so it's really really important to look at the connection between the tonal values and make sure that there's not too many there's not too much of a gap if you see what i mean um you know if you think of your lightest values as being a 10 and your darkest values as being a one um you know make sure that if you've got something that was supposed to be a one and a five and you've got a one and a ten that step is too is too far and it's it's not going to look right so you've you've got to be really really sort of careful and really look at your values quite carefully I touch on um, fur direction all of the time. Uh, you know, when I'm working on my tutorials, um, I think as well as the tonal values, making sure that your pencil strokes work in the direction of the animal's um, hair growth is absolutely key for realistic portraits. Um, and the reason being is that um, a short haired animal like this, the hair kind of comes in over the top of whatever structures underneath it, skin, bone, you know. Um, and if you get that wrong, then it completely changes the structure of the animal's face underneath. Um, you know, so if I was drawing this ear and I got my hair going in the wrong direction and I got it kind of going sideways, 
you know, I might have some lovely pencil work in there and some lovely shading, but it's not going to look realistic because people are going to look at it and go, well, what's going on with that ear? Um, you know, the same with the face where I've kind of got the face coming down over the, the hairs coming down over the muzzle. They're going downwards. They kind of then just gently sort of curve out in when I'm coming in over the top of the, uh, the cheek area and over that cheekbone. The hair then changes direction again. It can change uh, in texture a little bit too, you know, so we can go from quite soft into a little bit harsher where you can see a little bit more texture in there. So it's really, really important if you're wanting to draw realistic animals to be absolutely spot on with your um, hair direction. Uh, you know, horses, you draw a horse and the, the, the hair di direction on their faces changes all of the time, dependent on the bone structure underneath. So being, you know, absolutely particularly pedantic really about your hair direction and making sure that it is going in the right way you've got a curve in there if you need a curve you've got a curl in there if you need a curl and um, it's really really important um you know for that for that realism um yeah so i hope again that has been useful for you um i'm probably going over the same things over and over again but you know it, i think it's really key to kind of bring those those messages home really and um i'll be back soon with part 5Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video and I really hope you found it useful and have learnt something new. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below and if you'd like to find more tutorials filmed in real time with loads of detail and full step-by-step -step instructions, you can join my Patreon for just £5 a month. You can find a link for this in the description below. Hope to see you again soon.